So it seems to me, and as what I've been learning, this experience has been different for everyone. Absolutely. You know, I've seen since then, because this was my first close death, that people deal with one death and then the next one on top of it reminds them of the first one and that you know so if you've experienced a lot of deaths and you haven't dealt with them then you you're not doing your grief work and it's going to hang you up really bad but my husband and i were very interested in okay where is she what's happening now you know obviously she's still around because she's playing tricks on us and so we started looking at life after life and that kind of book. And uh, it gave us such comfort, you know. And then um, our family friend, we used to go on vacations uh, to Lake Powell. And so after Anita died, we made one last trip to Lake Powell. And we'd been so busy at work, I hadn't really done my grief work. And so I did it there. And I'd swim every day looking at these sheer cliffs and the beautiful blue sky and say, okay, just for today, it's okay that Anita's dead. And I bawl my head off. It's not okay. I'm never going to see her again. And they say, okay, I'm going to try it again. You know, and just, just only today, just while I can see these sandstone, beautiful, gorgeous cliffs and this blue sky, it's okay that Anita's dead and I'm never going to see her again. And, you know, then I'd cry but not bawl, you know. And it took me all week to be able to not only say it to myself, but then say it to Art, and then say it to our friends, and then mean it. So I have a poster, you know, of the sandstone cliffs and the blue sky. And when life gets difficult, I look at that poster, and now I just go outside and there's these beautiful Colorado skies. I think, yeah, everything's okay. And it still is. Yeah. Do you wonder what your life would be like if she was still here? Oh, boy, do I ever. Yeah. You know, what would she think of her dad dying? Or maybe he wouldn't have died. You know, we'd still be married. We'd still be in that house. She was kind of the glue that held us together. She was always planning, you know, where are we going to go eat for your birthday? Or um, She was planning our next trip. You need to give me some dates when you can go because I want to take you to Mexico. You know, and so she was always doing very thoughtful things. She was sending the nicest cards, the most thoughtful ones. You know, I pull them out at Christmas and my birthday, and oh, yeah, you know, she's still... <laughs> sending me her good wishes. But um, I always knew that she would take care of me when I got old. And when we got the settlement, I thought, well, you know, money's going to have to take care of me when I'm old because Anita's not going to be available to do it. So when we bought this house, we used the settlement money to buy the house. And we named it Casa Anita. Okay.